Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is the Technomancer. Let me get something out of the way. WTF is, has, and always will be a first impressions format, and that format has various advantages as well as disadvantages. Advantages are, of course, we can get through more games quicker, get a more raw impression of something, and obviously that's useful to some people because lots of people watch it. But, of course, the disadvantage of that is that we don't finish games, pretty much never finish games, so if you're looking for really in-depth information, this isn't that. You know, this is supposed to be a little tool in your toolbox, something that's a little bit helpful to maybe discover whether or not a game is worthy of further investigation. This also means, advantageously to me anyway, if I bloody well hate the game, I can stop playing it. I'm under no obligation to finish it. This is going to be the case with Technomancer, which is the third game from Spiders, who recently produced Bound by Flame and previously produced Mars Warlogs. It's set in the same sort of universe as Mars Warlogs was. And you may remember my video on Bound by Flame. I bloody hated it. I found the world to be interesting, but the characters badly written, the combat system to be just unbelievably terrible, with a wide variety of huge flaws. Guess what? Technomancer has exactly the same problems. They have not learned one little bit from what I can tell. First things first though, let's dive into the options menu and have a look because it's certainly not the worst looking game. It actually has some quite nice tech on display. As you can see right here, Shadows, SAO, various little kinds of anti-aliasing, well, two, FXAA, TAA, particles, texture quality and astrotropic filtering up to 16, dynamic resolution if you want to engage that, so that is going to downscale the resolution dynamically if your frame rate starts to drop too much and you've even got field division slider which is very nice for third person games not the sort of thing that you usually see but i applaud them for including that separate audio sliders always good nothing wrong with that and a couple of different game options nowhere near as many as i think it needs and i'll explain what i mean by that soon enough but you can also move the ui horizontal and vertically i do like that not, not enough games give you ui customization options like that would be nice to see more of that control options not much really there basically keyboard and mouse or your controller of choice gamepad here as well can't rebind the gamepad that's fairly standard unfortunately but you do have the ability to rebind the regular buttons if you wish and you even have a secondary button so nothing wrong with that now spiders if anything they know how to make a pc game in terms of the sort of options that are required technically now on a technical level they do as to whether or not they can actually make a decent RPG, well, if they can, Technomancer being their third game is still not proof of that. All right, I'm going to dive in. I have no idea how long I've been playing this game. It put me into some sort of stupor. I felt like my brain wasn't functioning. It was sort of trying to escape from the tedium of it all. Steam says nine hours. I, that's clearly not true at all. I, uh, a few hours at most. All right, so you play Zachariah Mansa. No, I'm serious. That's his actual name. You are a Technomancer who you would think is some sort of space Jedi. You know, that's probably a decent way to describe him, except, well, you know, Jedi sort of having abilities that other people do not and being sort of fearsome warriors, the best warriors in the galaxy. Zachariah Mansur is anything but that. Zachariah Mansur sucks at everything. Let's hit things. All right, so it is primarily an action focused rpg the vast majority of what you are going to be doing is hitting things with a stick or a different kind of stick or a knife those are your things you also have a gun it might be the worst gun of all time yes this is in the future and yet for some reason the guns that you are equipped with are industrial tools which make no sense because you are a specialized branch of the military and i'm dead N nobody knows why. You know, plenty of other people in the world are armed with actual, fully automatic weapons. Do you get one? No. Your little friend over here does, but it hits like a pea shooter. Lord knows why. Uh, incidentally, this is normal difficulty level. Nothing out of the ordinary. And these are just your regular run-of-the-mill mobs. And they absolutely freaking murdered me. Now, does this mean I'm terrible at it? Well, you remember when I did the Bound by Flame video? When I was having unbelievable trouble with the combat there? Same bloody situation the combat is really bloody hard and you hit like a pansy i cannot imagine why that is you know these are regular run-of-the-mill mobs yeah if they are higher level than me there's no way to find that out and oh god they can consistently stun lock you and chain attacks on you like nobody's business Ugh. good lord 
every mob in the game is like this. Except for the bosses. The bosses are even more ridiculous. They can kill you in like two hits, although these guys can kill you in like four. It's a regular pack of mobs. Now, what do you have to deflect or avoid that damage? Well, you have a dodge move. The problem is that the enemies barely telegraph anything they're doing. You know, if you're getting an Arkham feel from this, it's because that's sort of what they were trying to achieve. Like Arkham or Witcher is what they were aiming for here. I'm using my staff because it has an area of effect attack, you know, which is more useful against these tight groups. The th here's the thing about the way Arkham does things, and also Witcher. You know, the enemies deliberately telegraph their attacks, and usually a game will have some sort of UI indicator, a warning that something is coming, so you can actually deal with it. This game actually has no warning of any description. So you're going to find yourself doing the only thing which will keep you alive, which is spamming the dodge button. That seems to be the only effective way of doing things, because enemies are capable of attacking you all at once. This is the same problem that Bound by Flame had, by the way. Now, in games like Arkham, well, just the entire Arkham series, they design it in such a way that you can't have 12 enemies all going for you at once. Because that would be ridiculous, you know, especially if they staggered their attacks. So dodging that would be nigh on impossible. So they deliberately manipulate things to make sure that the enemies can only attack a few at a time. So it's it's avoidable. You get into a nice little rhythm. There are, of course, plenty of prompts to tell you whether or not you're about to be hit by something. So you have the opportunity to counter. Not to mention the fact that there are actual counter attacks, which if this game does have them, they're certainly not very effective. And that... Again, similar problem to their previous game, Bound by Flame, where countering anything would basically make no difference at all. Even if you did counter it, there was this stat, this very obtuse stat, that would determine whether or not you actually managed to stagger them. Most of the time, you wouldn't, even with the best gear. So that resulted in you performing a parry or a counter attack, and the enemy just going right through it and hitting you anyway, which was unbelievably infuriating. This game has a very similar problem. It has a limited number of combat styles. It has this sort of rogue style, which is, for the most part, stabby. You can do a stab move, which has a chance of poisoning the enemy. You've got a couple of fast attacks here and there. And you also have a gun, which overheats after three shots, because apparently in the future we can't figure out how to make firearms. Good lord knows why that is. I mean, it takes longer for this thing to become functional again than a bloody flintlock musket would be. You could reload one faster than that. You have a club and shield. Again, why do I have this? It's the future. This guy has a fully automatic weapon. Why would we be using melee weapons in this situation? I really do not know. And you also have a staff. Again, why? Don't know. Now, of course, if you had incredible combat capabilities, as you'd expect you would by basically being a special class of electrical Jedi, then it would make sense that you were using melee weapons if you could deflect bullets and do all sorts of crazy things. But you can't. You're actually really, really weak. You can take far, far fewer hits than your average goon in this game, and that has never made sense to me. Now, that is ridiculous. Like, why don't they just recruit the average goons? This magical space wizard fellow could take about three hits, and then he falls over. Oh, God. Now, I have to say, they've improved the animation somewhat since Bound by Flame, you know? The, the whole flipping around stuff is relatively impressive, for the most part. Oh, it looks pretty good. The problem is, of course, since you're doing almost no damage and there is really no visual indicator of an enemy staggering or really taking the weight of your blow, again, same as the last bloody game, attacks do not feel in any way impactful. You know, incredibly poor visual feedback for the player. And as I said, it's mostly about dancing around. I mean, this might as well be a cruiserweight wrestling match with how ineffectual the strikes are. You know, for the most part, you're dodging around. And as I said, these regular mobs, that guy just took half my health off in an attack that was barely telegraphed. Just kind of ludicrous. I tried to dodge out of the way, but I was mid-animation there, and I took yet more damage. And you know what's ridiculous is that the health potions, yes, just like Bound by Flame. Go watch my old Bound by Flame video. You'll see I'm repeating most of the same things. Are incredibly expensive. Uh, they require resources that are particularly pricey, and for the most part, you need what's called serum. How do you get serum? Well, you drain it from every single corpse in a five-second animation. Now, you can drain it from animals with no karmic retribution, but there's a, there's a good and evil system in this game. If you drain humans for their serum, you actually lose karma. Now, not only is this 
uh, just an incredibly annoying system because there's no reason why you wouldn't want serum from animals because there's no downside to taking it. So why is it that I should spend 20, 30 seconds, sometimes even longer than that, if I kill 10 plus enemies, individually looting every single corpse but there's an issue with humanoid sized enemies whereby you loot them and then the button for take serum which kills them inexplicably by the way everybody just falls over unconscious in this game i don't know why hey there you go you die of course but everyone else falls unconscious what what the button for Drain Serum changes from Q to E, which is the loop button, so it's very easy to accidentally kill an enemy and lose karma. Just by accidentally pressing that button while you're walking over a mound of corpses, which can be tricky when you're trying to differentiate the ones that have loot to the ones that don't have loot. It's a mind-boggling design decision. It's unbelievably infuriating and a complete and total time waster. So, what do you got so far? infuriatingly difficult combat that doesn't telegraph itself at all, that is effectively a button masher, simply because the best way to handle it is to just repeatedly hit the dodge button over and over again, wait for them to stop moving, then hit them with something, doesn't really matter what. Enemies that are all tougher than you, for no good reason, you know, not only does that is that utterly unjustifiable in the lore, but it makes your character feel anemic as hell, and who the hell wants to play an anemic character in space with lightning powers. Look at that! That- I'm a Technomancer. That is my magical freaking power. Yes, I know these guys are electric, so they've got some resistance to it, but that is my magical power. I can do 8% of their HP with lightning bolts. Why am- why have I been hired as a special force for anything? I- I'm terrible! I am the most rubbish combatant in the history of Mars. Oh lord, not every game has to be a power fantasy, but they've got to at least make you feel like you're effectual in some way, and this game utterly fails at doing that, and this is most of what you're going to be doing. Now, the rest of the game consists of crafting equipment, which is just a hideously dull exercise in tedium. Basically, there are very basic upgrades for your three different weapon types, your dagger, well actually it's four if you count the gun, your dagger, your mace, your gun, and your staff. And you can get like plus damage, plus crit, plus stagger, which is called this bloody hell! That's 90% of my HP gone in a nanosecond, un bloody believable. Don't even get me started on the uselessness of the companions, again, you know, evoking memories of that sodding bound by flame game. Oh, Jesus. Right, finally, you're out of the way, thank you. So you add these very basic upgrades that really are not entertaining to put together. I hate upgrade systems that are just basic stats. Now, do I really want to scavenge around for crafting components to give myself plus two damage or whatever? It's boring as hell. Please don't make me do that. Let's drain some serum. We're going to be here for over a minute if we want all this serum. I, I mean, at this point, I'm just thinking of ignoring it, but the components and things cost so much money that it seems like you have to drain absolutely everything, which... Oh, bloody hell is it dull. Now, at least it has a form of progression in form of this kind of ludicrous skill tree, which looks ridiculous, but once you click a quadrant of it, it's really not that difficult. You know, it's a very basic skill tree. There are prerequisites and all that sort of thing. So let's say I wanted to increase damage by staff by 10%. There we go. That's a Okay. I've learned something. And then we can increase the area for it as well. Confirm that. There we go. Most of these skills are not in any way interesting outside of the stuff at the very end, you know? It's like, hey, Berserk, that increases the speed of my attacks and all sorts of things like that. That's good. You know, nothing wrong with that. And you're, you're also able to upgrade some of the abilities with different attributes. So I can get the upgraded area attack and then I can grab another upgrade for it. So quite similar to Bound by Flame, each upgrade actually has three tiers. So there's nothing necessarily wrong with this system other than the fact that the upgrades are incredibly marginal and it doesn't really feel like you've advanced in any meaningful way. Every time I level up in an RPG, I like to feel that I've made a significant advancement in the ability of my character. I don't feel that in this game at all. As I said, maybe it gets better later on, but I don't have the patience to get any further at this point. You know, a few hours of this tedious combat, repetitive looting, and pretty awful voice acting. You know, I've, I've got to be honest about that. The VO is a massive mixed bag. The main character sounds like an amateur, you know, an absolute amateur. The writing's pretty terrible as well. I understand that they're not a natively English-speaking studio. Yeah, I get that. I, I absolutely get that. 
but there are words where there shouldn't be. There are sentences that make absolutely no sense. And it's a little bit of a shame because, just like Bound by Flame, they actually created a fairly interesting world here. There's a good amount of detail in it as well. You know, look, look at that little faded mural on the wall there. It's not a bad looking game. Honestly, for a studio with a very limited budget, it has some really nice lighting, a little bit last gen, but it looks good. Texture quality is generally good across the board. There are some issues with facial animation, i.e. there barely is any. They'll move their mouth and not move their head, so the conversations do look absolutely ridiculous. Plus, some of these idle animations look... What, what, what is she doing exactly? Like... I mean, she just needs a VR headset on, and I believe she'd be playing a Vive. What, what is... Nobody moves this way! <laughs> At least if she spoke to you, it would make sense, but you've got all these NPCs aimlessly wandering around trying to make the world feel alive. But, you know, this is a, this is a nice looking world. It really is. You know, there's a lot of nice detail here. And of course, you know, Mars is not a setting that has been overused in the RPG genre. So there are certainly reasons to want to play a game in this sort of setting. It's just very, very similar to Bound by Flame, which also had a really interesting setup. No, oh, very sort of dark fantasy, everything's going to hell kind of vibe. Unfortunately, we've got exactly the same problem with this one, where it's an utterly wasted opportunity to create a really interesting world full of interesting characters. You know, there isn't one, so far at any rate. Uh, I have yet to encounter one. These two guys that I've got with me have really no personality of their own. They barely speak. You can interact with them to find a bunch of lore about the world. But again, do I have the patience to actually explore this world anymore? No, I don't, because all I'm really doing interactivity-wise is hitting things with a stick, which there are some games where I really like hitting things with a stick. There are. Absolutely. This is not one of them. <laughs> it really is not. Outside of that, you've got your basic vendors, as I mentioned before, the crafting system, and you do get the occasional choice, which allows you to gain or lose reputation with various factions. I do enjoy that, you know. Gives me a little bit of a Deus Exy sort of vibe. More like they're sexy, am I right? In the terms of I can let somebody go against the orders of my superiors. I can then lie to them and all that sort of thing. That's good. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that bit of the game. You know, those are the sort of things that I do enjoy doing. I like that level of choice. Unfortunately, you know, it's everything else that lets the game down. The equipment system is as dull as Bound by Flames as well, and it is, frankly, a little bit unintuitive. Uh, you've got a bunch of different icons that don't really help. I mean, what does this bonus mean? Can, it's like, bonus! Cool. What, what is that? That There's an X there. What is... I don't understand what that means. What is this? Is this plus armor? Is that 3% armor? Couldn't bloody tell you. You know, there are no tooltips for any of it. So, perhaps there are bits of information you can find in the written guide, but all this stuff should be tooltipped, and it should be very clear as to exactly what all these pieces of gear are doing, and honestly, like, they're doing so little. They seem to be just so unbelievably dull for the most part. You know, a lot of different passives like 15% resistance to poison, 20% resistance to disruption. It's like, oh God, I want to fall asleep. Ugh. Again, it's three for three now on spiders as far as I'm concerned. It's so astonishingly boring and technically incompetent when it comes to developing any sort of fighting system. And when the majority of your game is going to be fighting things, you better damn well make it good. They haven't. They have not. So those are the reasons that I don't want to play any more Technomancer, thank you very much. There are a few others. You know, the, the map is a bit of a pain in the ass to get around. You've got this mini map. You've then got this thumbnail map. And then you hit M and you get a completely different perspective map, which makes it... There's so many icons everywhere. You can't even place a marker on the map to give you like a, a little breadcrumb trail or an arrow pointing to the objective, which makes navigation tricky, especially when it's multi-level. Indeed, there are several levels of height, so that can be an issue. I've had objective markers appear in areas where there doesn't appear to be an objective. You know, I don't know if I've completed the objective because the marker never disappeared, so I don't really know what's going on with that either. And God, it's such a shame because, I mean, look at all of this. You know, the art is great. The music feels uh, suitably sci-fi. It actually reminds me a little bit of Mass Effect in a good way. You know, this is a cool-looking world with a lot of detail, and it's filled with nonsense activities that are not in any way enjoyable and characters that barely speak English correctly. Ooh. God, what a disappointment. The trailers look pretty good for this, but unfortunately, as pretty much everybody's reactions coming out right now, saying that they really don't like it or 
you know, that it's a very, very mixed reaction. I tend to agree with them. As I said, Technomance is one of the most boring games I've had the displeasure to play lately, and I don't really want to play any more of it. And you might say, well, it's your job. You know what? I get to choose what my job is, and I choose not to play any more of this bloody game. Welcome to First Impressions. If you don't like and go read a review, as far as I'm concerned. And that might be a good idea as well. You'll find those reviews very much supplement my opinion and certainly do not disagree with it for the most part. Although, sure, maybe some of you have that level of tolerance for this oh, astonishingly dull everything. Maybe you're willing to put up with all of that for the setting and the lore. Congratulations if you're willing to do that. I personally would watch somebody play it and skip through the bits which involve hitting things ineffectually with a stick. Technomancer, ladies and gentlemen. Ugh. Available for $40 of your regional equivalent. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, by all means, do feel free to click the like button. If not, the dislike button is right over there. And I'll see you next time.